Spend my days trying to forget my fears And though I sleep, I don't see Now my dreams get clear Yeah, I don't weep I know fruits come to those that bear Yeah, I don't sleep I know my time will come this year Cause yeah, this is it This is my year This is my year I won't sleep I won't tire, yeah, sleep when I die, yeah On my knees, put in work to break bed with my mom My mom Cause this is it yeah. This is my, my This is it, yeah. this is my, yeah This is my, yeah I won't sleep, I won't tire, yeah, yeah Sleep when I die, yeah On my knees, put in work to break bed with my mom My mom Cause this is, yeah, this is my, my His name is Anaso Jobodwana I am proud to call him my friend When I think of Anaso, I think of the days we used to sit at the Clarendon benches And um, just talk about life he would never mention how amazing he was in running. Um, but one thing's always been clear about him. He's always been very clear about his dreams and his focus. He is a dynamite, a force to be reckoned with. And I believe this will truly be his year. I believe in this year's Olympics, he will surprise us all with his um, focus, his dynamic energy, but most of all, his winning spirit. Don't forget this name because it is sure to make history. We are ready. Hi, Anna. So, how are you? Thank you, sir. For sir. I'm good. I'm good. Um, so, introduce yourself for the people who may not know you. Yo, uh, my name is Anaso Chobodwana. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said I have introduced myself. What do you do? What are you? What are you known oh, for? <laughs> you. Um, I. I am a. Um, Professional athletes, sprinter, um, and yeah, I I run for a living basically. Okay, I'm gonna start off with I guess the first question would be, tell me about you growing up, what that was like, where you grew up. Um, I grew up in Pagamis, Elokshin, mm-hmm. um, in the Eastern Cape, sure. and. You know, grew up just like any other kids, yeah, um, playing games, uh, touch rugby on the streets, um, soccer, sure. and just having fun times. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I did okay. when I grew up. And you went to and high then, school? And oh, you want to know the full... The full spectrum. Oh, and then I went to uh, primary school in the uh, Del Junior King William Star. Okay. And, you know, over there I played tennis. Mm-hmm. Played any sport that you could think of. I swam, oh. played rugby, cricket, and I think squash maybe. And, um,. Then I moved on to high school, uh, where I made sure that I didn't play any sport. <laughs> Why? It was the freedom, you know. 
I was in hostel and I was just like, man, if I don't have to play any sports, yeah, and I know that I'm not gonna be found out, yeah, I'm not gonna play. So I literally made sure that I didn't play any sports that I didn't want to play. All right, be, but I'll I'll get, you know, caught out. Yeah, but I would miss train. I'll miss. Rugby practice Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah. and then Friday they would call me out because I'm playing on Saturday. Yeah. Only because I had speed, nothing else. Okay. Um. Because I was about to say I do remember you playing a bit of rugby. Okay. Yeah, I I didn't like playing, eh? Okay. But it was had to play a sport, and it was the only sport that I could run. Okay. And I mean, everybody played it, so sure. default. I'll play that. I'm not gonna do cross country. Okay. Um, cricket's definitely out because, yeah, I, I can't stand in, in the sun all day. Okay. And Why not cross country? Are you so you're you're more of no. a speed. Yes, yeah, speed or nothing. Okay, sure. Okay. Speed. I, I, you, okay. Long distance. I yeah. appreciate it, like those people that do it, but yeah. for me personally, it's not. Okay. You will not see me there. Okay. So. Um, yeah, rugby was the only way I could run and, you know, run against somebody. Yeah. And if I was caught out for not playing sport because sport was compulsory, sure. default was always going to be rugby. Okay. Yeah. So when did running <coughs> begin? That's the, obviously the career that you now have. When did that I mean, begin? I've always loved running, sprinting. Sure. Like, you know, playing touch rugby. Uh, and then being able to run away from somebody. Okay. I mean, it, it's a it's a, it's an exhilarating feeling, like not just to run away from somebody, but the feeling of running, of sprinting. Okay. Like, especially like you know, when you're running down the hill or something. Yeah. So it was always there, and then um, primary school you get it once in a while when they have inter house athletics. Sure. And you run and you compete, and then you get to. Were you always the fastest? Obviously. Not all the time. Okay. In grade eight. No. Okay, so I remember the first time I won. Sure. Um, under nine, okay. and I ran under nine, under ten, and then under eleven was the last year that I was the fastest. Okay. And then under tw under twelve and under thirteen, it, it in 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 primary school, it was two different guys. Okay. Like, uh, I mean, you might know him, Andy Lejo. He used to play rugby. Like, yeah. So I, I, he might still be playing. I don't know. Yeah. But um, yeah, he was he fast. Yes. 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 Okay. And then in high school, I only showed up for the the inter house athletics. <laughs> wow! Only once in a while. No, okay. because there was no. Oh, oh. There probably was. Yeah, but I was not trying to. I didn't want to take part in any organized sports. Okay. Like I literally didn't <laughs> want. No okay, organized sports in my life. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm, I'm alright. Sure. So even if I did like running, I just didn't want to show up for training practice to say I'm committed. Okay. And I have to show up every single Tuesday because who knows, next week Tuesday I might not want to come. Sure. But um, it, it always interested me, you know, I'd play touch rugby and, you know, I'd be faster than most guys. And that's when it just started budding, you know. And then I read Michael Johnson's book, <coughs> which was a very good book, at, and you know, in terms of me understanding mm -hmm. sprinting, sure. um, the world of sprinting, you know, uh, and the colleges that they have in the U.S. that um, ha have a system for track and field sure. that works very well. Sure. And that's that's what I wanted to do. And so, so only after reading the book. I mean, after reading the book, it was like, oh snap! There's okay. 
there's a world out there of track and field. Oh, okay. Like he was explaining the European circuit, he was yeah. explaining the NCAA in the US, sure. um, where most of the guys went through the system. Like, I mean, even now, like today, the most of the Olympians that are uh, prominent names in track and field, they all went through the NCAA system. I mean, obviously, some South Africans did it way, sure. but most people went through the, the USA. So I was very interested in that uh, because I, I think around about that time, it, South Africa was not as competitive. Yeah. And when I mean that, I mean, like, I think as you, at one point in time, the guys were all running against each other. But it would, like, it would be the same guys all the time. Yeah, and the times were like 10 threes, 10 twos. Um, and so when you go to the US now, you're running against people that are running nine seconds consistently. Um, and this is just across the US. It's a huge country. So that was interesting to me. What do you think it is about them that? makes them be able to run that kind of time. And Just the competition. No, we do now. No, we do now, sure. But I'm saying, why do you think that's taking us longer to get there? You know, I think one of the things is just belief. Sure. You know, it's like, I don't know, like, once I got into that system, I will not, it, it was more so... I just treated everybody the same. Sure. And I was much, 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 much more closer to the actual beast that the American sprint system is. Sure. You know, so it was now me being able to beat these guys that said, oh, you know what, they're all beatable. And I think that once that started happening, um, in, in the country as well, a lot more other people started to see that as well. That no, these people are beautiful, you know. And then that changes the mindset completely from I'm not able to do this to why can't I do this, you know. Um, nine seconds is still a very hard thing to do. Yeah. 19 I seconds. mean, I can't imagine <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm not taking it away, but yeah. it's like now there's that belief that we can do this. Yeah. Like on a consistent basis, we can compete against you guys and we can beat you. Yeah. You know? And I mean, positive energy like that is very contagious. So, I mean, on a wide scale, South African athletics just blossomed. Yeah. On a wide scale. From us seeing each other climb those heights, climb, you know, like yeah. for me it was like I watched I watched Wade yeah. uh, at, at juniors come forth the world juniors, and I was like, I feel like I can do that too. I run against this guy, I've beaten yeah. him once or twice, yeah, boom, and then now it becomes that rolling effect that now I see him, then somebody else sees, and then it starts becoming that thing. So, yeah. That makes sense. Um, t take me through your relationship with each other as like runners in South Africa. How, how does that look? I mean, we're all competitors. Okay. We're all competitors. Sure. So, uh, I mean, for me personally, I probably have not a lot of friends in the circuit like that. Okay. You know. Um, it's very hard, as I said when we spoke. It's not just even the fact that they're competitive, it's just probably don't have enough time around each other to mm. be friends in that sense. Makes sense. You know, so you'll have acquaintances and then obviously guys that you do hang out with um, when you are um, like at, at championships, yeah. you know, after parties. Yeah. You know, or when Relays. I'm in Joburg, when yeah. I'm in Joburg, I yeah, hang sure. out with most of them. But okay. in terms of like close knit friends, where you know, like my friend Iggy from high school, where we 
call each other and, and, and we speak about like real life things sure. on, you know, like relationships. Um, then it's, it's very few. Okay. Very few. Sure. Um, let's start with <coughs> 2012. Before yeah. I get to the more like personal questions, let's just do the like, career stuff. Oh. I mean, like fluffy careers, like personal career questions are coming. Um, uh, I'm talking about like 2012. Take me through through that. I think it was 2012, right? The well, first one. The first one we came. First in. Olympics. Yes. Okay. It was 2012, right? Yeah. Okay. Where do you want me to start? Okay. So take me through qualifying for that. What that felt like? What it felt like being there? Why do you think you came eighth? <laughs> and Instead of what? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean obviously in twenty fifteen you came third. So I mean like what what was we're getting to what was the difference, but like take me through that experience. As if you were as if you were there, not hindsight. Ooh, you know that's eight years ago if you talk about it now. Yeah, sure. You know, that's sure. a long time ago. Okay. Yeah. You know, honestly I on you I actually didn't even want to go to Olympics. Okay. Um why? Because I'm a competitor at heart. So when I looked at my time, I was like, there's no ways I'm going to be competing against these guys. Okay. You know, so it's like I didn't want to go for the experience. I just wanted to go there and perform. Okay. So I just felt like I was not in a space to perform well. Sure. So I was like, I don't want to go. Okay. You know, um, and then, but also it could have been an excuse not you know, for myself, not to test myself, or I was scared, or, yeah, you know, I think it's a mixture of those things, sure. but I didn't want to go, Okay. and, you know, I just kind of, I kind of let just things happen, I guess, went with the flow, I was like, you know what, let me just, let me follow the process, mm -hmm. and whatever happens, happens. Sure. So now I had done my first qualifying time in um, April of that year um, in the US. And for me it was like, whoa, like I, just, I just really did that. Mm -hmm. And I sent my results to, to uh, the South African athletics uh, people. And then after that as well, I went back to my to my uh, to my goals, and then I'll just kind of put the okay. Maybe I should put my goal as the Olympics, and I remember I reversed it and changed the goal to chase for Olympics. Okay. Because I ran the qualifying time. Sure. And so it was there now, it was written down, and then there was um, problems with the school that I was with. I wanted to transfer. They weren't allowing me to transfer, and then they kicked me out. So now I, I get, this was in May, I flew back home. I had a little bit of an injury. Um, and so my dad lived in Pretoria at that time, so I stayed with him. And I went to the Daily South African offices. And they were like, you know, you're qualified. They were excited, like, because I don't think I, I was relatively unknown and I just qualified for the sprint events and nobody had done it. Yeah. Or a few people had done it, but now it was this thing of they wanted us to run it twice. Yeah. So, um, and I was like, no, it's fine. I don't want to go to the Olympics. I think I've qualified, so that's enough for me. And they were like, no, 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 you have to run one more time. And so the guy was like, and I was like, I don't have anywhere to run. And he's like, we'll get you to Europe. And I was like, I don't have money to go to Europe. They're like, no. Okay. Athletic South Africa is, is part of the package for, for athletes who have qualified. Oh, interesting. And um, so I got on a flight to Europe. And then my first race, I ran like super slow, like 21, 21 one. That's low for you, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. for people in context, 2101 sure. is like high school time. Sure. okay. And 
It was, and I ran 20.3 that season. Sure. So immediately I was just like, yes, yeah. I called, I was like, listen, I don't want to waste your money or your time. I just ran slow. Just get me back home. And they were just like, relax. You're going to get it right. And then the second race, I ran 20.8 or 20.6. Sure. It was in France somewhere. And I remember I was like, wow. Like, I was so confused. I was like, I've been running fast all season. What's happening? And then the third race, uh, which was my final race, I don't know, everything just clicked. And then I, I ran that second qualifying time. Okay. And then it was just like, okay, and that's always going to the Olympics. Yeah. So now... What was the difference, by the way, between those runs, like, when you think back? Which runs? Like, between the three qualifying... No, runs. okay, so now, the first one was jet lag. Okay. So I flew, sure. I landed on Wednesday, and I, like, on a Wednesday, and I ran on a Friday. Okay. Because it's coming from South Africa. Okay, yeah. Like, that's just... Not right. Yeah, that's jet lag. Yeah. Me. So, and then the second one, I I had not been training properly for a while because okay. of the uh, the slight like niggle that I had. So, I was kind of rusty in okay. a sense. Sure. So then, I flew in, right? I flew in, and then I ran that race, mm -hmm. and then I immediately after I had a week of training. Sure. So then, with that week of training, I got back under my feet, got my body to a rhythm again. And when you race, most of the times is when you race, you you start to figure out a lot more things about your running, you get your rhythm back, and then when you put it together in training, you're able to run faster. Makes sense. So that's how I was able to build up. Like I would be running those races, and I'd be like, okay, you know what? This is where I went wrong this time. Sure. How can I fix it? Let's go fix it. Yeah. And you know, it ended up being that on that last race, I was able to fix everything that I needed to fix. Got the qualifying time, and then now I had time to prepare for the Olympics. And once I had that time to to prepare, my confidence kind of um, built back to a very positive like. To a positive level. Sure. Yeah. So. And then now, Olympics 2012. Okay. Yo. What is, what's going on? I mean, I don't know, yo. Like there was so much going on over there. Okay. Like so much going on. That, I mean, now I'm meeting Casta. I'm meeting these. I'm walking in the village, I'm seeing guys that like I literally looked up to, like you know, like I had my folder and it was like full of Usain Bolt in mid-flight and all of these things and now you see this guy like right in front of me. Yeah. You know, like those things, I don't know, like I don't know if you can put them into words. I get you. You know, you're walking you're like, whoa, I mean I don't even follow basketball like that, but it's like, oh. Kobe Bryant or yeah. you know LeBron James like yeah. they're just right here you know, those type of things but you know I don't put way too much attention on on, on those on those type of things but sure. just to acknowledge the moment mm. because like all these guys are here at this village right now and yeah just just then, you know, we're just to be in the warm-up area and watching these guys. And it's like, whoa, this is different, you know. It's a shock to the system. It wasn't a shock, though. It wasn't, it wasn't a shock. Oh. No, it wasn't a shock. It was more so like, it's not a shock, but it's like, you hear, like, what is being a Tyson Gay, a soft power? Yeah. What? What's going on? Yeah. You just take me all in. It's not a shock though. I don't know what it is. It's yeah. I don't know what it is for real. And then once you get into that stadium, I don't know. I block it out sometimes, but it's like the crowd is crazy inside yeah. there. 
Yeah. Like the first time I was like, oh, whoa, whoa. For real. <laughs> like I was like, wait a minute, like yeah. it was crazy. I was like, what the heck is this? But I don't know, in the moment you block it out. Mm. It's just business. And I mean that first round surprised myself. You know, I'm looking around and I'm like, okay, like, I kind of knew that, it, you know, some of these guys I can take on, and once I started getting in the race, I was like, oh, okay, I've got this, I've got this, now hold composure. And then that second round, when I saw I had Usain Bolt, I remember when the, heat, when the, when the heat sheets were taken out, they were put on, on our village board or whatever it is. Look at the heat sheets. I was like, "Oh snap! I'm in the same heat as Bolt." And then I was like, "Okay, Bolt's gonna do his thing. Who else is in this race?" And then I was just like, "Oh my God! I've got a chance to make the final." And then I just took him. I just ran because I was like, I looked at all the people in my heat, and I was like, "I've got a chance." Yeah. I've ran against most of most them. of these people. Yeah. And at least I've beaten them at least once. Yeah. So I've got a chance. Got a chance. Sure. And I just that's all I needed. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Bolt. I mean, Bolt is gonna do whatever he's gonna do. I'm not even gonna try and focus on that. Yeah. The other ones. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So now you're in the final. Uh, I mean, you know, like at the final, my body was dead. Okay. My body was dead. Like I had not run that fast in my life, so my body just took took it hard. Yeah. That's that's what usually happens. Like I ran, I think two of my fastest times ever in my life. Cause I mean, my first, I mean, indoors, I ran like twenty point six, and then outdoors I ran twenty point three. Um, but I had not run those races consistently. So for me to run 20.4 one day, then come back the next day and run a PR, that was too much mm. for my body. Mm. So I mean, even the doctor, um, the Olympic doctor that was there, he was just like, your body is fried. Yeah. Just go out there and enjoy it. And yeah. And that's it. That's just, that's that's all I could do. Like I, I literally could not move. I was tired. I was just like. You know what? Let me just yeah. try not to get injured. Yeah. Yeah. And then 2015. What about? Obviously now you come third. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. In the final. Yeah. So take me through that. I mean, that year was just everything was clicking. You okay. Know? Um. I just had the right mindset, not that I had the wrong mindset now, but in terms of right mindset, it's like my confidence was at the right place. Um, how much does your mind, like, how much of a place does it play? What? Track and field is 90% mental. Okay. 90%. Okay. So you have to have a strong mind. Do you think that's what you say is like? Yeah. Factor is his mind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How do you work on your mind? I mean, I mean, if I train every day, that's how I work on my mind. Okay, sure. You show me evidence. Yeah. And you building that. Yeah. The more I train, the more confidence I. The more confident I feel, sure. the more confident I feel. So, the worst thing for me is like when I get injured, you know, because now I'm injured. I'm not testing myself against the best sure. on a weekly basis. Because now, what happens is when I test myself against the best on a weekly basis, and knowing myself and how my body feels on a specific day. Can go back and be like, oh, okay, that's what I did wrong. Uh, I mean, you can only be grateful for something if you take the lessons that you learned from it. Okay, did you take the lessons? 
Okay. I did. Okay. I did so. So you are grateful. Yeah. Do you ever are you ever grateful for like a? a yeah, I guess I am. Okay. Yes. What is the feeling like, like for you when you stand on those? Because I don't know. You don't seem to. Um, or maybe you do. Do you care about the when you're on the podiums? <laughs> I think for me, it's like when I'm in the moment. Yeah. It's yeah, and then I forget about it. Okay. Do you do you want people to know you? Like know who you are. Yo, you know, yes and no. Okay, explain. I just, like more so it's like, the no part is like, on the most real level, it's like, I feel so much more comfortable when I can just... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But when people do know you, it's not. It's it's nothing bad. It's it's like I enjoy it because it's like they appreciate what I'm doing. Sure. So that's why I'm saying like yes in terms of not know me, but it like I feel it feels nice when somebody appreciates what you are doing. Yes. You like know, knows your work. Knows my work. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And and then the no part is like, Jay man, like, and then I was like, I don't know, I just like being. Yeah. Yeah, what? Yeah, undercover. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why, and and yes. Okay. So it's a yes and no. I get you. And you can't have both? No. Exactly. Yeah. Take me through the text. I know they all have a meaning. Let's start with this one, because I like this one. They, this one is connected. You like this one? I like this. This one's connected to this one. Yes, but I like the meaning of this one. And what is the meaning of this one? So this is the arrow, right? Wow, okay, yeah. So it's the one about being pulled back. Oh. Right? Okay. And my grace until you are released and you hit the target. Oh, okay. I don't know. Yeah, you are on the right path. Okay. Actually, yeah. But it comes from somewhere, so take me through it. Yeah, it comes from. Yeah, that comes from that. No! Okay. No more explaining. I need Can you just no, explain? No, explain. No, explain. Nix, okay. Yeah. Um. Hey, hey, okay, so aim to be exceptional. Yeah. Um, obviously, it comes from my favorite arrow. I mean, weapon of choice is an arrow or sure. an arrow. So now the aim to be exceptional comes from that theme of bow and arrow because sure. you aim with the bow and arrow. Yeah. And to be exceptional. I mean, exceptional is just thinking everything. In every circumstance, like even be exceptional in defeat or exceptional in, you know, in losses, like in just not just exceptional, just but yeah, only in good things. Ooh, yeah, like, winning. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the arrows <coughs> are like aim to be exceptional, and those are the arrows. Oh, nice. And then, you know, this is an hourglass. But like you're just glossing over these meanings, like. Okay, and in the arrows you get pulled back, you hit the target. I mean, you've already, exactly, no, you've already but, said it yourself. But, okay. Anyway. Okay, okay, so, you know, the arrow, it, the arrow gets pulled back. And that's kind of like the setbacks that you have. Sure. But even when you're having those setbacks, if you still focus your mind on the target. Yeah. Eventually... When you, just, when, you, when you get released, it's you, know, you hit the target. So it's almost like always remaining calm, even in setbacks. Yeah. And a nice thing about it too is that they 
they use they use archery as a form of Zen training in Japan. Interesting. Yeah, the sensei and, um, and just the art of archery is closely related to Zen. Sure. And so I also like that concept of the two in terms of you know mm -hmm. centering your mind around a bow and arrow can help you center your mind yourself balance your mind to be able to you know remain in a neutral state in losses and in wins sure and and I mean there's a lot more to Zen but that's also something I learned from it you know mm -hmm. um, yeah and so this now is my alter ego. This is Apollo. Okay. Um, he's an Olympic god. So instead of getting the Olympic rings, I just felt like I should just do something a little bit more meaningful. I mean, Olympics meaningful, but more meaningful for me. So, sure. I mean, this is my alter ego. His weapon of choice is the bow and arrow. Mm. So then it made sense, you know. The only thing is, if it was. Uh, I don't know if it was the only thing is and I did my research I couldn't find it or maybe it didn't appeal to me but I was looking for an African god oh, I that see. could depict the same thing same thing yeah with the bow. Okay. yeah but I mean it, it. this is all centered around the Olympics and the sure so it made sense so the real sports at the Olympics is like archery yeah. like, I mean there's archery in the Olympics yeah I know so like that's yeah. what we should be watching because they're like, no, 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 no. Oh. Dates. <laughs> Relax. Okay. Relax. Okay, okay. I, yeah. mean, I mean, you can go and watch archery, but obviously, yeah. the people. Wow. Know, the people who know what wow. they know. Wow. They are, I Watching mean, the runners. Okay. Okay. Time. And then this is an hourglass. Okay. The brevity of time. Mm -hmm. Looks and like it has a fish in it. Yeah, okay. It's sad. Oh, it's sad. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just the brevity of time and being able to have a very healthy relationship with, with time. Explain. <clears throat> just simple things like procrastination, sure. like time is money, like okay. understanding just the concept of time and and how to use it and what you need to be spending your time on. Okay. And not wasting it on frivolous things that are not going to empower you or um, help you or the people that are around you in a positive way. I agree. And, you know, just enjoying life the way you want to enjoy it instead of uh, how you think people want you to enjoy it. You know, just being able to be true to your values in a sense of being able to to understand those values and put all your time towards those values and those people and you know, it's just understanding the time of the You don't need to do business with yeah. <laughs> Okay, and then this. And then this. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. And then this is uh, That's this is my This is a, this is a, a to to tornado. Yes. Tornado. I don't know. Have you ever watched for tornadoes? No. Have you ever gone on Google and watched tornadoes? No, they like skin. Yeah. They're so interesting to me. They scare the living daylights out of me. Yeah. But they're so interesting. Okay. But honestly, I think the tornado, no, I'm not even saying the tornado is more so, especially after 2016. Um, I mean, obviously nowadays you know when a tornado is coming because of all the data and, and mm. stuff, but like, it just shows up and it wrecks everything apart and then it disappears. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like, for me, I had to, that part was just me understanding that that's life. Like, Something will just come along and wreck everything apart. Or just even an obstacle can be something that wrecks things apart.
that's life that's nature at its best like it like things will be going swimmingly and then boom knock you off your feet yeah what are you rebuilding towards me sheesh i think i'm trying to get way past beyond this thing of i have potential I'm like 27 now Like I'm way past that age You know what I mean And it's more so Just being able to Fully realize What I'm capable of Because I feel like I've just had One season right Where I literally Lived up to the best Of my ability Which season was that? Was 15 Okay sure And then After that You beat the guy Who was second Recently Right? Gatlin? Gatlin, yes. Yeah, yeah, 2018. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But it's more so that thing of, you know, just now I understand what what I can do and I've still got time to actually tap into what I can do. Sure. So, but, you know, and also being, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm just rebuilding to get a medal again, get an Olympic gold medal. Um, and just start transitioning outside of track and fields and, you know, changing up my goals in that sense. And, um, yeah, just being able to transition out of track and field without any regrets or any type of Damn, I, I just want to be remembered that. for 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 being I didn't do it. Um, for being a good father to my son. That's beautiful. I think that's like the that's like the the thing that I want to be remembered for. Not just to my son, but to my children in jail. If I'm gonna have more children. Charismatic superstar of athletics. He's won every global 200 meter title since 2008. Usain Bolt is the man to beat tonight. Can he deliver once again, just as he did in the 100 meters? Even our pulses are quickening in the commentary box. Such is the excitement and the magnitude of this evening's climactic race. Zarnell Hughes, a training partner of Usain Bolt. 20.05 in the London Diamond League into a massive headwind. He's promised a sub-20. Will it come this evening? The fastest man in the world this year over this distance. Will he hold his nerve and get some kind of revenge? After folding in the last 10 meters of the 100. Massive, massive night for Justin Gatlin. Arguably one of the biggest races of his life. Ramil Guliev of Turkey, 20.01, a national record in the first round. Seventh in Berlin. He's in cracking form, but he needs to be. And on the inside, Femi Ogunode of Qatar, a really quick starter. He too producing a national record and a lifetime best to qualify for this final. 991 this season over the 100 metres. Bolt in six. Who will hold their nerve on one of the sport's biggest stages? The final of the men's 200 metres. Uh. Gatlin gets a good start, he's already up on Zarnell Hughes, but Bolt's got out well, and watch out for Edward on the outside, but you say Bolt is up, he has a lead over Gatlin, can the American come back? He's starting to close the gap, Justin Gatlin is trying to close, but Bolt's already smiling, dare we ever doubt him? 19.56, Usain Bolt is just unstoppable when it comes to the 200 metres. 
Gatlin is applauding, he did well, he started to close with 70 to go, but it wasn't enough, and what a brilliant, brilliant bronze, I think, for Anaso Jobadwana, the South African. That's your one, two, three. Did we ever dare doubt he would produce yet another double? Rounded down to 19.55. He hasn't run that quickly for more than two years, but he always saves his best for the right occasion. The crowd are on their feet. It's a standing ovation once again for the greatest sprinter we've ever seen. And try, try as he might, Justin Gatlin just cannot beat this charismatic Jamaican. Super race, wasn't it? Bolt, Gatlin, and as you mentioned, the national record for Joe Bukwana from South Africa. They'll be going crazy there tonight. And in the end, guys, four men went sub 20 seconds. But Gatlin smiled. It just wasn't his night tonight. But a 19.74 clocking for a man that's been so consistent this season. He got a great start, Gatlin. He got a great bid. He came off the bend well, but the man was still two metres in front of him. What do you do to uh, what do you do to go past a guy like that? It's almost impossible. At that stage, with about 90 metres to go, Gatlin knew he was in second place and he was gonna stay there. And that's what he had to do, wasn't it? It would have been on his mind the fact that he did lose his concentration of form in the 100. He was clearly desperate to just keep his form and not be passed for the silver medal, and he held on by what, 0.13 of a second from the fast-finishing South African. Good race, though, to end what's been another wonderful evening. But the man, look at the Jamaican fans there in the crowd, sold out tonight because of the big man and, of course, because it's the World Championships. He's, he's outstanding. We run out of expressions to use for him, don't we? There are no more superlatives with which you can describe Usain Bolt's talent. You could argue that the 100 metres was one of his finest victories, bearing in mind the season he had and the injury problems that had beset him. But whatever has happened before, he tells us in advance of these major championships that he comes and produces his best. And there's a look of respect between the two men there. Gatlin running 19.74. There was no disgrace in that second place. He ran a really, really good race. The bottom line is he just isn't quite good enough to beat Usain Bolt. And look at the difference. Usain Bolt, those six individual races outside of that 400, he's absolutely shattered. Justin Gatlin, of course, a little bit fitter because he's been consistent to racing all